Hey guys, welcome to episode 161 of the Cat Lady podcast. I am Andrea, also known as the Cat Lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, which stands for Craft All the Things. Currently, I'm not crafting all the things, but I am collecting crafts, so we have future plans of crafting all the things. Thank you for tuning in. If you are new, uh, I, I'm mar I don't talk well. Uh, <laughs> I'm primarily a fiber-related podcast, so lots of yarn crafts. Um, knitting, crochet, spinning, potentially weaving uh, are all some of my favorites, uh, but I'd like to do other things as well. I have a circular sock machine that I haven't touched in forever. Uh, I have lots of things that I really am itching to do, but just can't find the time. And I'm currently obsessed with like, I pick up a project and I'm kind of like, I really want to finish it. So, which is a good thing, but, and then on the other hand, I want to cast down all the other things. So. We're, we're waging a war of what to craft but anyways thanks for watching if you like what you see please like subscribe share all that stuff uh if you are a returning viewer thank you of course always for coming back and sticking with me so it is wednesday i typically try to start recording is it wednesday yes <laughs> i typically try to start recording on monday tuesday and then record snippets through the week and then put it all together on Friday but I am very late this week uh, David was home he, he was sick but it's not sick sick so like he had I, we really feel like it was probably just allergies the weather here we're in Michigan has been just just terrible but then really nice and then terrible so we had a really nice weekend we had gone outside it was like 80 degrees and then boom it was like 40 degrees on Monday and we had the heat on, or we had the heat on on like Friday Saturday and then we took that put the AC on on Sunday because it was got so hot and then we it was really cold overnight and then the heat went on again Monday so I feel like that was messing with him so he had a scratchy throat and a cough so I kept him home on Monday and then yesterday we kept and then Monday night he didn't sleep well like he woke up at one and said well he woke us up at one and said he hadn't fallen asleep at all um, I don't know if that was completely true, but he didn't sleep well. So we kept him home yesterday as well. So like, I haven't done anything this week. You know, I managed to go to physical therapy, but on Monday, and then I'm, I'm going again today. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really didn't get anything done, but I did do some crafting. So, but I like, I'm like laser focused on one project right now. So I don't have a ton to share. I did work on another project as well, but so are all the same projects you've seen actually this one you haven't seen much of so this will be new uh, but this is my skirt that I'm working on so last I showed you I was working on the kind of front panel so my, my plan is to make a very long skirt so I'm actually here uh, the whole front top or the whole top part that covers like your midsection butt area all just double crochet because I want it I don't want it to be see-through I still have to wear something underneath like probably like black shorts or something just because crochet is a little see-through-ish but uh and then I have a pattern for the trillium skirt which is a very kind of lingerie kind of cover-up piece is what the pattern's designed for but I like the motif of it the triangle motif on it so I'm put doing that all the way down and I was going to put the slits in the side but I think I'm not now I think I'm just going to go with it as is so last you saw it, it was way up here. So I've gotten a lot done. And actually it's really cute as a mid-length skirt. I could stop it right here, but I, I really want to keep going. Even though I might run out of yarn because this is all I have left. Uh, no, oh, you know, I have a lot more than I thought. Okay, so I have this as well. This was left over from the dress I made. This is Karen, not Karen, Lion Brand Pound of Love. So this was left over, the one pound that was left over from the dress and then this was a whole whole pound here so actually so yeah I didn't realize how much was here so this is quite a bit so maybe I will have enough but yes uh, I love the way it looks so far I am nervous it's a little stiff but I feel like I had the same problem with the dress and it I when I wash it I always like wash it and dry it one time it tends to loosen up like it's acrylic so I'm hoping it does uh, I can also steam it a little bit if I need to, because it does seem a little bit stiffy, stiff. Um, where's the 
back up on the side here. Right. So you can see where I screwed up my seam, but also like obviously I added stitches. I like increased a little bit here. So luckily it's like right over the booty. So it's not noticeable when it's on. And once I like, again, once I wash it, maybe it'll loosen up. It won't be this weird bulgy part, but going down the rest of the way, it looks pretty good. <laughs> so it's just that one little spot up here. Um, but you can see I'm starting triangle motif. So, uh, so yeah, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. And where are we at length? So I'll have to move my little marker. Let's see where we are here. I mean, it, like I said, it's like a really cute length right now. It's like right above the knees. Like it's tempting to stop here. <laughs> but I really wanted to go all the way down. And I have the yarn. So I'm just going to keep going. And hope that I don't have to buy another thing of yarn. Because then I would be like, okay, well now I need to make another project. And that'll be the third project in the same color yarn. So I could make a matching top. Hmm, that actually would be cute. So stay tuned. I will move my little marker. But this has been my project. This has been like my sit on the couch and work on project. It's like fun to watch the triangles kind of develop. And it's just enough interesting to, you know, just keep you motivated yet very simple that it's still like I, uh, I can, I don't have to like completely focus on it. I can kind of pay, I, just, I do need to pay attention a little bit, but not too much. So tangent, I went to a craft night last night with, uh, a new group that started and this is what I worked on so I was able to like sit and chat and work on this and not have to be like you know I had to rip back a couple times here and there just uh I would notice I'd forget a cluster or something but it was like easy it's easy enough to not have to like super focus uh and then I was introduced to another pattern so it's she was working on a crochet top so I just finished my like granny waffle block top well it's the same kind of concept where it's like two panels but it's like the drunken granny is what the stitch pattern was called and it just looks so cute and again it was two panels that you sew together and then you do this like roughly sleeve and I'm like oh. so it's free and she sent it to me it was called the sunny crochet top so I'll try to put a picture in if I remember uh if not I'll try to link below if I remember but if I can't I'm not casting it on yet but I'm looking at my yarn I would probably just use acrylic I think it called for DK, which I don't have DK, so it would just be worsted. Maybe Karen Simply Soft again. I do have a purple that's really pretty. Uh, gold. See, it's going to probably take two skeins at least. So, so what did my other top take? It took, oh boy, it would look really good as like a crop top though. Because, yeah, I don't know. So I could maybe, I have a lot of purple because I was, I had intentions of making another, well, the red was supposed to be for another What's the name of the sweater? So there's a sweater I've made. I've technically made three of them. I made one for me and two for my mom. Who was this? And I don't even remember the designer. Was it Alicia Plumer? I don't know. But it's a V-neck. It has a little like, uh, and it has sleeves with thumb holes. Boy, why can't I remember the name of that sweater? If I remember, I will put it down below and put a picture. Lots of if I remembers today. Um, but anyways, I have it. It's gray. It's so it's all gray and it's got different color sleeves. So it's got all light gray and then dark, dark gray, like three quarters down sleeves and thumb holes. So yeah, and it's a lovely sweater and I used Karen Simply Soft for the first one. So I bought all this red and white to do a Valentine's version. So it was going to be all red with white sleeves, which white sleeves seems like a very bad idea, but whatever. Uh, but now I've used all the red, so that's not going to happen. And now I have purple. I have like four skeins of purple and then lavender. It was going to be like a dark purple and the lavender sleeve. But I might just do, I might just use it for the top. Purple, purple crochet top would be cute. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, cause other than that, I don't have, I could do like a sparkly silver, which actually would be cute too, but it was like worse than Karen is, Karen simply soft is, kind of more of a light bristed slash DK. So I, I like, I know, I like the way it, hang, it drapes and everything. So if anything, I would probably do that. But anyways, I'm not casting it on now because I have so many other things I said I was going to cast on that I need to cast on, including two hats for my children and a shawl for Rhinebeck and another shawl that I just wanted to do because I wanted to do it. So those have to come first. 
But I was kind of hoping to finish the skirt, but I don't think I'll finish the skirt before I cast something else on. Something else might be cast on prior. This needs to be finished though, and we are going to finish it very soon. So this is good old weaving shawl, the, and really needs to be blocked again because it's all wrinkly again. This is the shawl that was made on the, this is front of the back. This was made on the pin loom, so a bunch of woven squares all seamed together, and then I applied a border, so it really needs to be blocked because, of course, it looks all curly and gross. But I did the pico, which I think turned out really cute. So, yeah, so basically you just got these little picos sticking out. So, yeah, it needs to be blocked and pinned. We need to, like, pin all the picos out. But I'm over halfway, so I made it past the halfway point. It was a little sloggy, but that's super easy, so just need to chain my way through that. So maybe I will work on that this afternoon. So that's it. Uh, I have not touched my scarf for Jim. Kind of not feeling it because it's kind of boring. <laughs> um, and he's not going to wear it. I mean, he could have wore it today because it's like freezing outside, but uh, we're just, we haven't made any more progress. So I haven't touched it since I showed it last, which was here. So I have not touched it since here. So I need to move that. I haven't even moved a marker. I haven't touched it. Uh, and I, I took it out of the bag because I'm using the bag for my skirt now. So now it's just sitting on my table. So I have piano today. And that was like the one I was going to take with me for piano. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I should. I should. I should. Just so I can work on it for at least the one day. But I don't know. I'm, I have to, I'm working the skirt. So I want to work on the skirt. <laughs> so uh, last week you saw that I got a crazy... <laughs> uh loom or rigid heddle 3d 3d printed loom that i'm going to break apparently uh i've not touched that of course but i did go to the library this weekend and we got some books so we have inventive weaving on a little loom which i guess that's a little loom discover the full potential of the rigid heddle loom for beginners and beyond so yes i have kind of perused a little bit through here so I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to, um, I'd like to make like a washcloth or something, something small just to start. But I watched a couple videos on how to thread it, and yeah, it look, it's a little bit complicated, but I think something for like a wash washcloth will be simple, because I don't have to do a bunch of math as far as how long it needs to be. I don't, I don't have a warping peg. That is one thing that did not come with it. So I need to figure out how I am going to do the warp. I think maybe around a chair or something would be fine. Uh, we got Weaving Made Easy, 17 projects using a simple loom. Again, same thing. The like, samples in there are using a rigid heddle loom. Ooh, this one's got like mohair. That one looks really cool. Ooh, really like that. Look at that. Uh, so soft and airy. I like that. Hmm. Short decorative scarves. How? Picks per. I don't know what any of that means. Tendent, rigid heddle with six inch weaving width, two stick shuttles. I think I have a 10 dent. I have an eight and a 10. She, okay, yeah, so this one's a 10. She labeled this one. And then the other one's an eight, but she didn't label. Uh, what kind of yarn is that? Two ply lace weight kid mohair. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would be cool. That could be fun. Oh, and I like these like patterned like these checkerboards, kind of plaid, I guess. And also really pretty. Oh, they need slippers. That's actually kind of cute too. So I'm guessing you felt uh, you felt it. Okay, so you make you make the uh, fabric, then you felt it and uh, cut them out. That's kind of cute. Bobbled slippers. Okay, so it shows about felting. It's just kind of cool. Felted coasters. This is using an Ashford loom, it looks like. So, so yeah, this will show me how to warp and weave. Uh, and then weaving on a little loom, another one. And this one looks like it's using, so this says it's a little loom as well, which is a little bit deceiving, but this is a square, this is like a square loom, which I have one. I'm borrowing one from, <laughs> borrowing one forever, apparently, from Jen the Uncreative Crafter, aka Storm Coast, aka my twinsie. She let me borrow one years ago. And I haven't done much on it. Uh, I made some coasters, pretty much. And that was it. But 
that's what this book is. So I thought it would be fun to do those things. And see, I'd love to make these like tapestries. I like, look at how cool those are. Like that is super cool. I love that. So this was more of a just uh, learning how to make like tapestries, I guess, really. Because I mean, what else do you do on a frame loom, frame loom besides some kind of tapestry or a uh, poster? Because I mean, by the time it shrinks down, it's pretty small. So, oh, I mean, look at look how cool these are. So, I like that. Uh, and then last but not least, Learn to Weave with Anne Field, a project-based approach to weaving basics. And this was using, so this had a rigid head loom in there. Um, oh, and a floor loom. So this kind of went over all sorts of looms and then a bunch of diagrams. And oh yeah, this was like, this is like showing you how to do like, which would be really cool. But you like have all the petals on the floor loom. I would totally don't have room for that. So this goes into, I could, I would really love a warping board though, because I could use that for dyeing self-striping yarn too, but that's okay. It's not, it's not, I'm not going to go into that right now. So we'll just stick to warping. I mean, we're not making anything huge. So like the like largest thing I would, yeah, it's like a warping mill. See, that would be ideal. Except one of the ones that's horizontal, I would like. Um, but I'm not making anything huge, so the largest thing I would like to make that I think is doable with this is it would maybe be a table runner. I think it'd be really cute to make a table runner for my dining room table, uh, but that would be a very, very large project, or you know, it'd be as large as a scarf, really. So, let's see, yeah, I mean, look how cute this is. This looks like store bought. And I, don't, see, I don't know if I could do that. That's like a, I, I'm sure I could do it, but yeah, all these patterns look complicated. Um, so I don't know, but uh, I have these for the, for a couple weeks from the library. So I just want to peruse them. See if I get anything going on there. Again, I should start off small though. So washcloth, placemats, placemats would be fun, but I do want to make placemats with these, with the pin loom. And, oh yes. You know what? So I bought this mini kit from Fiber Dog Fibers. Let me grab it. I actually did use these. I believe that were these on a pin loom. So these are hand spun. Oh, and they're like kind of rustic. Yeah, 100% Warmni. I don't know if that would be good for a placemat or not. But it's it's not as it's not necessarily like wearable soft. It's definitely rusticky sock or rusticky yarn. So it's going to be good for some kind of home decor. But it's like the black with all these pops of colors. And she did a, she did some pin, we, uh, loom weave, pin. I can't talk today. She did some of these squares with this yarn, I believe. And it was super cute. Uh, how many, boy, how many yards? It's like eight yards total makes a square. And these are 40 yards a piece. So what is that? Eight. So I could make five, roughly, five squares per color. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven in here. So, oh boy. Yeah, I'm gonna figure that out. So, but I think this would be perfect for the, for those. But then I, and then I've got to figure out project. But it's like, do I have enough to make like table mats or... I don't know. So, okay. All right. That's all I got for today. So, oh, and let me show you her crinkle, crinkle, fiber dog fibers. She does a bunch of hand spun. So, but yeah, I, yeah. Okay. I'm rambling so much today. I'm so, so sorry. So let us, let us, let us go. And uh, we will see what I come back with probably Friday. So we'll wrap it up on Friday with whatever we have. So <laughs> see you soon. Hey guys, it is Friday. So we are wrapping up the week. And as you can see, 
I have a finished object, completely finished. So I, I really love how the border blocked out. Like I, you saw this when it was all wrinkly. Uh, the ends are still hanging out, but you can't see those. But so yeah, this turned out super nice. So I like it more than I originally thought. I do like the woven texture of it as well. So yeah, this is cool. Uh, I feel like possibly you would need like maybe some pins to hold it because the ends are a little bit short, but I don't know. I like the way I like the way it hangs. I like the way it looks like this. I love this. I really love this border. So this was the summer citrus shawl. I'll put it down below. It was made on a pin loom. So all these squares were woven on a pin loom with the cat lady yarns in talk to the hand, which is a merino nylon. And then the border is crocheted, just some chain crocheting and also the cat lady yarns in wild raspberry. So yeah, I was very excited with that. So I all did something I said I wasn't going to do. Speaking of pin loom weaving, I did some pin loom weaving. So I had this plan and I can't remember if I talked about, I think I had, yes, I did. I shared the minis, the rainbow stars minis from fiber dog fibers that I had bought. Uh, they're very rusticy. So I wanted to do like a placemat. So I calculated how many squares I would need and I'm, I'm kind of based it off the size of these. Uh, so I decided I needed 15. So five, five rows long, five squares long by three squares tall. And I think that would make a really nice sized placemat. Um, and I was going to do one mat per color, but I would need a lot more yarn. So I figured it out that I would make like a checkerboard pattern. I should have brought my notes that I made out, but you can, you'll figure it out. So it'll be alternating the rainbow star colors with just solid black. And I'll make like a It'll, there'll be like eight of the colors and then seven of just black. So picture like the other two corners would be black and they would alternate. Now this one's the darkest. This is purple. So it's kind of hard to see the color. I don't even know if you can see the color in there. Oh, let's try this. So this is the purple stars. Boy, I really don't know if you can see the purple in there at all. And there you go. Now you can see it there. So there's little flecks of purple in there. It, you can see it in person. So, but I have two of those made and I'm on my third one here on the loom. But I feel like this, I feel like this is just the perfect placemat material. It's just very, just sturdy is what I would describe it. So, uh, and I, didn't I say I wasn't going to like do any of these projects where I had to sew all the squares together? Well, I am. And I'm probably gonna just do it the same way I did it. I don't know, I can try the sewing machine. I just feel like it wasn't that difficult. I am gonna do it a little differently. This one was very loose. So like you can kind of pull them apart. I watched a video where she like looped it twice per set of loops and that might be more secure and less. Plus this is thicker yarn. This is like a sport, sport weight worsted almost uh, where this was fingering. So everything was very thin anyways. It is a little trickier to weave the thicker yarns, I'll admit. This, these ones like went real fast because you had lots of space to kind of get the needle in and out. This one, like when you get to the end, it gets real, it gets real tough and I'm like really jamming it in there. But this is a slow burn project. I'm in no hurry. I have no deadline. And I ordered another set of minis because I think, I don't know if I've, honestly, maybe I didn't need it, but I was, uh, I'll probably still need it. This is going to make, I need eight squares per color. And I calculated I should only be able to get f at max five out of this, out of each mini. So right now I'm at almost, I'm at three. Okay, so I mean, probably two more in there. But boy, I feel like I could maybe get more, another one out of there, but maybe not. So I figured another set, I'll definitely get the eight I need. And she's going to dye up some black. It's very, it's not going to be the same yarn. Like this is Romney. She's going to dye up something else or over dye something black for me to make, so I can make the black squares. But I, I want the same rustic texture. You know, I don't, because I mean, I could just use a regular acrylic or something, but it wouldn't be the same. And this is a two ply. So yeah, I definitely need something similar. So a nice hand spun. And it, it, this is, 
definitely has got some hand spun qualities so you know there's some thicker spots and some thinner spots and I just like the way I just love the way it turned out so so that I think this is gonna be really a really cool project so and once I get them finished then I will I have six place yeah six place settings for my dining room table so I figured I'd do seven because um I have there are seven colors in the set where did I put the set I don't know I don't know where it went, but I think believe there's seven colors. Oh, there it is. Uh, so yeah, we have a yellow, red, orange, blue, green, one, two, three, and then a light blue. So there's two blues. So yeah, just like one backup, I guess. And I don't know if I have enough total, I could make like a multicolored one. So I could have eight total because technically sometimes when we do have people, we'll fit eight people to the table. So. Eight place mats would be ideal, but I'm right now we are seated for six. So, uh, so that's that for works in progress here. I was working on my skirt some more. I don't know if I did a ton more. No, not really. I just did a few more, pretty much just a few more rows since I last showed you because I started other things. <laughs> so, well, I finished this, so that means I got to cast on something new. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't work on this a ton. And then I did work on my scarf. I said I wasn't sure if I was gonna. I was a good girl and I put in some work on the scarf during piano. So last you saw the scarf was there. I moved the marker and everything. So just did a couple inches of the scarf. So again, this is another project that's like no hurry. So but I should work on it because if I work on it, it'll get done eventually. So. so that's that. So what did I cast on? It should be, it will be no surprise because I already talked about casting it on, but I will show you. And I just cast it on yesterday and I really like how it's turning out so far. So I'm casting on a barley light for Emily. And this was the yarn she picked out from Parker Avenue Knits. Um, And this is in the Mano Still Uruguay Allegria in the Carnival color. So a very fun, bright color. And yeah, it's turning out very fun and bright. So I've just got the ribbing. I'm on size two, 16 inch. It does make my hands kind of crampy because I'm not used to, not used to like the tight knitting or the tight circle and the thin, the smaller gauge knitting. So, but you know, it's, easy just and I'm doing one by one ribbing which isn't always isn't the best but um but yeah I made some made some decent progress yesterday so I'll work on that some more and get that done Emily like Emily gets is interesting so if she really likes something she'll just wear it all the time so I'm hoping she might like just really like it and wear it all the time because she wore a hat last like a couple summer not last summer but a few summers ago she had this like crazy winter hat it was based off a Gravity Falls character that she liked. But I mean, it was like this ridiculously like ear flap hat and she wore it all summer. And then by the time winter rolled around, she was like not really into it anymore. So she didn't wear it in the winter when she should have, but it was pretty amusing. So it's like 90 degrees out and she's in like a winter hat. So that was a weird phase. But I'm hoping maybe she likes that hat. She sees I wear hats all the time. Even in, in even on a crisp summer morning, I'll have my uh, Barley Light. Barley Light is definitely my go-to hat pattern. Um, it's free, it's lightweight, and it's got a little bit of it, little just enough detail to make it not super boring. I can't get behind, I can't do the sock head hats. I just, they just look too like floppy. No, I just don't like it. So this is my go-to hat pattern. Uh, and that's it. That's it. Oh, that's it for projects. So I went to the Dollar Tree yesterday and I needed to get a little, just a couple more decor things to spruce up my, um, so I'm, I'm reconsidering my garland. So I'm thinking the stars need to wait for July. Just think 4th of July. That needs to be the thing. So July needs to be the red, white, blue. So for now though, from like May through June, I think we just need to have like spring, summer. So I bought some like fake flowers, some little like mushroom statues, uh, a couple little hanging things that say stuff about spring. And then um, maybe I should make some flower garland. So, 
So I need to make an Easter garland eventually and maybe some flowers. I think some easy flowers would be easy. <laughs> Did I do? What did I do? What have I done? I've done sham. Okay, so it'd be similar to like the shamrock. It's just more petals and slightly different shapes. So I need to look that up. And maybe like a colored center and a different colored. And I have so many scraps. I just think that would be, like I see yellow up there, white. Uh, that's all. I guess those are the only <laughs> summery spring colors I see. Uh, but I have a whole bin in the back corner somewhere. Back corner. Uh, that's got a bunch of scraps. Anyways, so I bought some of that. It's not up. I sold my Easter stuff up, so that needs to go. But I stumbled across some other things. So I got this stencil. So I mentioned I wanted to do some sock blank stenciling. So I got my flowers that I bought last time. And then, I don't know, this one was cute. Just a little seahorse summery. So a good, like, summer, summer stencil. And then I, I'm bad because I already have one of these. At least one of these. Maybe not, maybe even two of these. But these are, like, fun to put heat transfer vinyl on and I haven't done it with the other ones but they had more of these and they kind of come and go in stock so I just bought two more so but they could be like notion pouches makeup bags whatever so they're a dollar a dollar 25 now but that's okay <laughs> so then I got again another project that I had planned with my son at one point and which actually we might end up doing again we could still do um <clears throat> I gotta find the magnets so I bought these little magnets and we were going to make these little like picture, like you mod, mod podge like pictures on the back. And then so you can see it through the front and the glass cube. So these are just glass beads. <clears throat> um, so we might try that out. I don't know. I Last time I went to the dollar store they didn't, and I looked, they didn't have the clear ones. So they did, so I bought one. So stay tuned if I do something with that. Uh, and then, last but not least, they have, they've had yarn there for a while. Uh, and this Premier brand, which is what they sell at Joanne Fabrics, I believe. Like, I've seen Premier before, so it's not like an off-brand or anything. It's Premier Yarns. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I usually would get my, like, contrast heel toes sock yarn is Premier, I believe. It's like the Deborah Norville or whatever. But um, this is called Just Cotton. I thought, I, I've never really made, like, anything like a shirt, like all the like summery tops and stuff, they always say like crochet projects are always like cotton, 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 even though then I hear like cotton stretches and stuff. So I'm a little nervous to use cotton. Um, okay. I do take that back. I made one little crochet top thing last year, which I don't even know if I showed it off or nothing. I haven't taken any pictures of it. That's for sure. Cause I made it like, I feel like I made it like right at the end of the season where it's like, I couldn't even wear it cause it wasn't hot anymore, but it's like a it's like a bralette thing, so uh, eventually I'll, I'll wear it this summer, once it's summer. But anyways, I I want to make a shirt of sorts. Oh, I bought five? I thought I only bought four. Oh, I bought five. I got five of them. So I got plenty to make a top, like a crop top or something, or a tank top, tank top, basically. I, did I find something? Yeah, I did find something. It was called the Summer Valley Top, I believe. And it's like a full front top, and then it like... Uh, it like it makes a V in the back, like a really deep V in the back. So you have your full just front tank top style, like just cap sleeve, and then the back it just it comes down your shoulder and like totally deep V and kind of look connects in the back. So it's really cute. And I someone on Ravelry had used this yarn for theirs. They didn't have any pictures, and I don't think they finished, but I think they use they use this yarn. And so, but I don't want it to stretch out. So they do I just make it small and just like assume it's going to stretch. I mean, it's okay. And it's okay if it's a little like loosey goosey. So maybe I'll just make a small, I don't know. I'm nervous. If you have any tips on working with cotton and how it reacts after you wear it and stuff, let me know. Cause like everything just like cotton, 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 cotton. And oh, and this actually isn't hundred percent cotton. What is it? It's 85% cotton, 15% polyester. So maybe, maybe that will be better too maybe that since it's not 100 percent, but then cotton will shrink too so like technically if it does like stretchy stretchy out maybe if you wash and dry it'll shrink a little so i don't know but this is the the colors weren't great but this one was pretty sage marl so it's a marled and it's a light green so i like i, I like that color i don't know will i look good in this color i don't know but it was like there was like lots of pastels pinks light light blues eh, it's just like not my colors so and there was like a weird dark denim. It was like a denim blue. I guess it might have been okay, but eh. I like like 
jewel tone darker but like this teal would have been I, they might have had like a teal but i'm also trying to step out of my comfort zone and not do everything in the same color so this is definitely a new color so i will start some i will start that eventually i have so many other things to start first so so that's it. It's Friday. Uh, Emily's got a band thing tonight, so she's going to be doing that. And then I think we're going to possibly take David to the park and get some pizza. So that'll be nice. Uh, tomorrow we need to clean our basement, which is not going to be nice. Um, and then Sunday will be a probably chill, chill day. And next week is Emily's birthday week, so we got to get ready for that. And I start piano lessons next week. So David's been taking lessons every week and I thought, you know, I tried to start self-teaching myself, self-teaching myself, started to, started to teach myself out of a book that she recommended and it was, it's fine, but it's like, you really want somebody to correct you if you're doing it wrong or to explain things and like, I want, I want more, I want more. I need some more structured guidance, I guess. And I would like to learn some, you know, different stuff and what things mean and theory and how to read music quicker and except stuff like that so so i'll give it a try so i start next week and i will put a little snippet at the end of the video of what of a song i've been trying to self-teach myself and it's it's been a while it's been a couple of weeks i've been practicing and uh, each time i feel like i get a little further on the song i get a little better there's a lot of hesitations um so i really i stopped i stopped right after the part where i definitely screw up more so I got this first section down so um I will put the song I'm not even gonna say it because it's French and I'm gonna screw it up so it's by Eric Satie uh, Gymno Petty <laughs> number one I think is what it is is that what I'm gonna say it I said it. so uh that's it I hope everyone has a great week weekend week ahead uh the weather is finally breaking I mean, I, I'm seeing someone outside walking right now in a hat and a coat, <laughs> but it's sunny out and I went to the bus stop in a hat and a coat. So, um, so hopefully we, I need to start walking. I need to commit to being a healthier person. I am just like, I'm not a healthy person. <laughs> so I'm, I told my husband, I, we need to start making more chicken and vegetables for dinner even though everyone's gonna hate it and we need to I need to start walking so I'm just putting it out there into the universe I need to do some more healthier things so with that I will stop rambling and I will bid you farewell and I hope you all have a great week and you get to craft all the things